Hello, I'm Yoshitsubu Shitaka, the Chief Scientific Officer for Asteras Pharma Incorporation. It's my privilege to be here representing Asteras. Today, I'd like to tell you about our exciting global cell therapy program. I thank you for this opportunity. First, our customary disclaimer. Today, I'd like to begin my presentation by introducing you to Asteras Cell Therapy. We have four sites in US and Japan. The Massachusetts-based AIRM was founded from the 2016 acquisition of Okata and serves as a core center for regenerative and cellular medicine at Astelas. Universal Cells was acquired in 2018 to acquire Universal Donor Cell Technology and is now a research center for gene editing at Astelas. Xiphos Biosciences, which was acquired in 2019, has its own technology called Axel and has become a center of excellence for Astelas next generation car cell medicine. We have ARM satellite office in Japan to collaborate with Japanese academia and in-house drug discovery capabilities. Asteras has established a firm footfold in regenerative medicine and cellular medicine with an entry point in the field of ophthalmology where we have established the foundation of the cellular medicine value chain. We have continued to evolve the protocol of cell differentiation to many types of cells and the enrichment of clinically usable pluripotent stem cell lines. As a result, a foundation has been established a great gen to, to generate a large pipeline along with a significant improvement in manufacturing yields. In order to avoid and reduce immune rejection, which is the biggest challenge in cellular medicine, we have established multiple universal donor cell lines and working to apply it to retinal pigment epithelium, natural killer cells, etc. In addition, in collaboration with Pancera, we are recommending immune response evasion technologies. We have been steadily building up our GMP production system, including a new facility. I will talk more about in a moment. Finally, we are developing a logistics system to deliver cellular drugs to doctors and patients. In particular, we are focusing on the development of formulation technologies that support logistics. And we have made great progress in developing technologies that allow us to freeze the final product and final formulation and significantly extend its shelf life. As I mentioned, we recently inaugurated the new facility in Westboro, Massachusetts, which is designed to further strengthen the research, development, and manufacturing efforts that support the challenges of cell therapy. The facility houses research, CMC manufacturing, and clinical development functions. Facilitate collaboration between our members and make decisions that span from research to early commercial production. As a pioneer in pluripotent stem cell-based cell therapy, Asteras has greatly improved its cell man manufacturing capabilities based on nearly a decade of GMP manufacturing and regulatory expertise. For cell manufacturing, plans are un underway to make the facility the starting point of the supply chain. In addition to the development of new formulation technologies, mentioned above. I will explain Astera's strategy for cellular medicine in more detail. But first, 
our strategy is simply establishing a firm footfall in ophthalmology and establishing the foundation of the cellular medicine value chain first. Then leveraging UDC technology to expand the cellular medicine pipeline to include other disease areas beyond ophthalmology, including immuno-oncology and immune homeostasis. And combining stem cell technology and gene editing technology to evolve to next generation high functioning cells. In this slide, you will see the organic use of the cellular medicine platform for each of the cellular projects that exist in our primary focus. Following the clinical trial of retinal pigment epithelium, ASP7317, ophthalmology, immunology, and cancer projects has established cell differentiation protocols. The cells yellow highlighted are the ones for which the cell differentiation protocols has, have been established and will be moved forward for GMP-related activities. Asteras will continue to develop its cellular medicine platform with the goal of achieving multiple INDs by 2025. In the subsequent slides, I will introduce our main areas of primary focus for cell therapy, blindness and regeneration, cancer immunity, and immunohomeostasis. This primary focus will develop new treatments that preserve or restore vision for patients suffering from diseases of the posterior part of the eye that place them at high risk for blindness. Currently, more than 160 million people worldwide are blind due to diseases of the posterior part of the eye and suffer from a significant decrease in quality of life. However, there are no effective treatments for these diseases or the drugs are not effective enough. This figure shows key RE programs being researched and developed. Asteras has multiple programs that target specific cells that are lost in diseases that lead to blindness. The retinal pigment epithelium, which are the cells of the retina affected by dry age-related macular degeneration, has been assigned to ASP7317, Asteras lead program in cellular medicine. ASP7317 is derived from human pluripotent stem cell and aims to inhibit the progression of the disease and restore visual functions in patients with atrophic age-related macular degeneration by replenishing lost RP cells through transplantation. In addition, we are pre 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 preparing a photoreceptor cell medicine program for retinitis pigmentosa and programs for retinal ganglion cells for glaucoma. For corneal endothelial cells that are damaged by corneal dystrophy, we are promoting a cell therapy program. Although cornea is an organ that has already been widely used for transplantation, we aim to realize off-the-shelf cellular medicine by generating corneal endothelial cells from pluripotent stem cell. Next, I'd like to discuss our next area of primary focus for cell therapy, immuno-oncology. We have dedicated our collective strength to find new ways to treat and cure cancer. We are building an immuno-oncology innovation powerhouse that will help to drive the future value for cancer patients and will deliver first-in-class 
transformative treatments for cancer, cancer patients. We have made tremendous progress over the last couple of years. Today, I will focus on our recent progress of cell therapy in immuno-oncology space. This slide shows our key pipeline assets and programs in immuno-oncology area, highlighting the modality, the mechanism of action, the stage of research and development, as well as our partners. As you can see, in addition to monoclonal antibodies, oncolytic virus, and biospecific immune cell engagers, we are extending our allogenic cell therapy platforms as well. I will cover these in more details on the next slides. Our cell therapy programs combines universal donor cell-based natural killer cells developed by universal cells with the compatible CAR system from Xiphos. I will share more details on these technologies on the next slides. The combination of the two technologies will enable us to establish a highly differentiated cell therapy pipeline, which will address critical unmet needs. Universal donor cells are engineered to be accepted by the patient's immune system. The UDC are optimized to receive the compatible CAR system or necessary gene editing is applied and then differentiated into natural killer cells. As you can see on the top right side of the slide, we are able to differentiate CD56 positive natural killer cells from the UDC. Our team has also optimized the CAR T construct for these cells that has improved cytolysis, as you can see on the bottom left, bottom left side. These cells are fully functional and capable to kill target cells, as shown on the bottom right of the slide. Let's switch to the compatible CAR, -T, CAR, CAR system invented by Xiphos team. This technology combines an inert NKG2D-based chimeric receptor and a modified antibody, so-called MICA body, that exclusively binds to the engineered inert NKG2D receptors. The INKG2D plus MICA body complex will act as a fully functional car once they bind. The advantage of this system is flexibility and enhanced tumor targeting compared to the static traditional cars. The compatible car system is adaptable. The car NK cells can be rearmed with the same or a different MICA body, and they can target different antigens at the same time, depending depend on the disease profile. This slide shows the effect of the compatible CAR T cells in B-cell lymphoma animal model. The color scale shows the tumor burden in the animals and the different rows represent day one, day six, day 13 in the experiment. The compatible CAR T cells were infused on day zero and the animals were those with MICA body targeting either antigen A or B. Please note that the compatible CAR T cells are the same and only the, only the MICA bodies are reinjected. It is an aggressive disease model. It kills most of animals by day 13. The compatible CAR T treatment clearly shows clearance of tumor. However, the strength of the response depends on the MICA body, which is applied in the different animals. 
Finally, I'd like to introduce immune homeostasis, which is one of our primary focus candidates. The mission of this primary focus candidate is to deliver safe and curative therapies for patients suffering from immune-related disorders. This slide illustrates the three programs currently under investigation. There are two cell therapy programs. The lead program, pluripotent stem cell-derived mesenchymal stem cells, accumulated locally in the inflammation to specifically suppress only the disease-specific immune response, restore immune homeostasis, and promote tissue repair. In addition, Universal Cells is conducting research on cell therapy using immunoregulatory cells. These cells have the property of selectively suppressing self-reactive T cells and inducing regulatory T cells. These programs are still in the preclinical stage, but the lead program, the PSC-derived mesenchymal stem cell program, is targeted for IND in fiscal year 2022. Thank you for your time and attention.